Okay, so let's start doing some of the fun stuff. If you open up the bot scene, and we'll start just setting up a few basic moves. And what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, essentially a library uh, which lets us mix and match various different animations to create um, a, a whole series or chain or mixture. So we'll start off just by doing a basic walk cycle. Now, the robot doesn't have legs, but you can still do that kind of basic move. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. And before we do, before we start the actual animating, let's just go into our edit project settings. Uh, I'm going to change this to 30 frames a second. And I'm going to make my animation go from 0 to 59. So we've got a two second animation, which we can then loop um, or do what we want with. But I'm going to make most of these um, moves sort of warp cycle or maybe a jump or a fall or something like that. I'm going to make them all two second loops because um, that makes them just a little bit easier to, to kind of navigate and use a little bit later on. Now they can be retimed so we can have this adjusted if we want to later on uh, and I'll show you how to do that in a later on video. So for, for now we've got two second clips set up and we've got the timeline I'm just going to keep open uh, but underneath here so I can just drag it into view. Um, but you can use the, the window menu here and uh, just to open your timeline or shift plus F3. Uh, or if you're using a second monitor, you could always pop it over there like I do as well. Um, but for the purpose of this, I've got that open. I've also got my visual selector open here um, and you can access that just by double clicking on this icon, the tag here next to the bottom null. Um, and that just means that I can access all the various parts of my robot as I need to uh, much more quickly than opening up the hierarchy and trying to find bits and bobs like that because that really would be very time consuming. Okay, so I've got that open there. Uh, other than that, I've got layer browser with just one layer in there at the moment and that's just to keep my material manager um, clearer. If I wanted to add more in for a scene, then I don't have to worry about them, but I can bring them back just by clicking on the menu marker there. Uh, I can click it again just to hide them. Um, so they're all still accessible. Okay, so with that all kind of done and out of the way, let's move on to making our first move. Now, I'm going to, let's just drag the, this visual selector back in so I can start selecting things. I'm going to start by setting up what would normally be kind of the hip, hip wiggle. So that kind of side to side motion that a biped would have as the hips roll. And I'm going to do that with this character just by kind of shifting the the whole uh, kind of selection of the whole bot to start with just side to side a little bit as he moves around. Um, and it will go from one side to the other and then back to the center. So we want all of these moves to start and end with the bot in this position. So let's take our position and rotation markers here. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to add a keyframe at the start and one at the end on frame 59 and that means that at the beginning and the end everything will be in this one position. Now I'm going to back off just five frames or to frame 55 in fact is fine and I'm also going to do the same on frame 4 and I'm going to add keyframes there. The reason I do that is because uh, if you looked at some of the basics videos already then you'll have noticed that you can have kind of overshoot and looping of keyframes. Now, by doing this, it means I don't have to go into the timeline and start selecting them and going to linear. Now, I can do it that way, but I know that I want to be able to mix these with other motions a little bit further down the line. So I'm just doing that as a buffer, and that should help prevent any of those problems. Okay, so I'm going to go into my front view, which I'm just going to turn on to a quick shading like so. In fact, I'm not going to use lines, I'm just going to use quick shading like so. And let's just bump my viewport up a little bit here. I'm going to make myself some room. Now I'm going to start off by hitting E for my move tool. And I'm going to go forward, let's say, I think 20 frames, or two, 2 frame 20. And I'm just going to move back let's say minus 50. Now you can do this however you see fit, but I like to work with roundish numbers if possible, if suitable. So I'm going to do that there. And I'm going to go forward to, let's say about frame 40 to keep it reasonably 
kind of um, equal for the shift on either side. Now you can make this a kind of a, a few frames off either way just to introduce some randomness, which is often a good thing to do. And I'm going to go forward 50 frames or plus 50 in the X axis and then add a keyframe there. And then if we go back up into the perspective view, now what we'll see is that the whole robot will slip left and right as we as we play with, through the animation. And I'm just going to drop my selection so you can see it more clearly. Ah, there you go. Now what's happening here? Into the center. So it starts off the center, off to one side, back to the other side, and then back to the middle. Now I've got a feeling that there's a little bit of looping going on there. So I'm just going to have a look in my position keyframes here and just see what's happening. Now there is a slight bit just there. So I'll just zoom in so you can see that. And I'm just going to flatten that out with that handle like so. And I'll just make sure that the other end is not doing that as well. Uh, on my position X and I'm just going to drag that down until it flattens out a bit too far like so okay and now this should have been solved yep okay that's good now what I want to do next is to add that kind of more natural looking swing so I'm going to use I'm going to turn off my marker for recording positions keyframes and I'm going to stick with just the rotation. Now I've already got the, the kind of buffers set up in place there and because I've already recorded a rotation keyframe at the same place as the kind of furthest left and right of the swing I can just use them as a reference but I'm going to overwrite them. So R for my rotation tool and I'm just going to pop that round maybe five degrees Hit return to do that and then record a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to frame 40 and do back. So minus five, apply, add a keyframe. And then we can see that, yeah, it'll waggle like so. Now that's looking quite good, but I think what would probably be better is if while he was tipped over that way, his head might just kind of sit slightly straighter so at frame 10 I'm just going to take the head um, in fact I'm going to do this at frame 0 no I'll do it at frame 10 I'm just going to pop that straight there keyframe do the same at about frame 45 50 is probably a good place to do it keyframe and then I'll go to frame 20 just add a keyframe and about there at uh, frame 35. Now I'm just going to go to the start end position and add a keyframe with no rotation just so it matches up for all our moves because like I said before at the beginning and, and the end of each of these loops we want everything to be at the zero position. So I'm going to do that there now. Um, I'm also going to pop into the side view and I'm going to go back into my position keyframes um, with the head still selected and I'm just going to go to about halfway so let's say about frame 28 or so and I'm just going to compress the head down just a little bit like so so that should just pop just a little bit Okay, so let's see how that's looking now. So that's a little bit better. Now, I think really uh, we want to have a, a little bit of kind of compensation movement in the arms um, just to really help sell that move because it's a, it's quite a nice little walk, I think. Uh, if you imagine him moving forward as he does this at a reasonable rate, then I think that could work quite well. So let's start with the left arm. So I'm going to add position rotation keyframe at the start. Let's say at frame five, and then we'll go to the end and back to frame 54. 
uh, just for that buffer. Uh, I think I'll probably do the same for the other arm as well, just while I think about it, because it's very easy to forget to do this sort of thing. So I'm just going to get them in there now. Okay, so back to the left arm, and I'm going to go to the furthest point of that tip of the body, so around here, and I'm just going to rotate that arm out like so and then as it's there I'm just going to tip that up a little bit. Now I'm going to start introducing um, some slightly more uneven kind of parts to this animation so that arm goes out and back in I think as that one gets furthest out this one can probably go out just a touch as well. Now, and this is just to introduce a slight bit more personality. Um, so I'm going to bring that one back in, like so. I might always also just give that a slight forward rotation. Um, and as it gets there, just back a bit. Actually, let's do that on the same keyframe because that just reduced the amount of keyframes that we have in the animation, which in my mind is a good thing. Back to the original arm. I'm just going to play through here. I think as it goes out, I think it could probably just tip forward just a touch as well, like so, and then back in. Okay, so if we drop the selection and now play through this, we should see something reasonably attractive. So as he's walking along, he's gonna just lift his arms. That might be a touch strong. We can go back and adjust that if we need to, but I quite like it for now. Now this is where the fun can start because what we've got here is a motion clip or is a, a, a very short animation which we're going to make into a motion clip. Now I'm just going to move the visual selector out of the way because what the motion clip does is it allows us to take our keyframes in the timeline and just hit space so we can see them all again. It takes all of this information and it basically converts it into two keyframes um, with all of this still in there in between. So we'll have a start position and an end position. And that's for everything we've got keyframed in this two second chunk. So what we need to do is I'm just going to select all my keyframes for the bot. Now, you don't always need to do this, but I have found that if you don't select the keyframes that you want to convert into a motion clip, then it doesn't always work. Um, so I would suggest always selecting your keyframes. Now, I'm just going to put them back so they sit in the right place here. So I want them to go from zero to 60, like so. So I've got those selected. I'm going to select my bot null and I'm going to go to animation, add motion clip. Okay, so what we've got here is this pop-up menu. Now, the first thing to do is look at the hierarchy. I want everything. So just make sure that everything in there is all selected because I want the, the motion clip to encapsulate all of the information in that robot. Um, include position, yes, because we animated the position and the rotation. Um, you can include the parameters if you want. Um, you don't have to, but I tend to leave that because it doesn't add a huge amount to the size of the scene file, um, which is fine. Uh, if you're doing something which is slightly more complicated move, it can be worth checking the create pictures because this will give you a start and an end frame um, to look at in the timeline, which I'll show you in a minute. So although I wouldn't necessarily do it for a simple move like this, I am going to do it just to show you. So create a motion clip, yes. Bake expressions, we haven't really used any expressions, so there's no kind of aligning to splines or vibrates or anything like that, so we don't need to do that. Start, naught. We don't want 0 to 60, we want 0 to 59, because that's the length of our animation. Now, I just did that and I'm going to undo it because what I actually did is I hit enter after I'd input into that field. So I'm just going to go back to add motion clip. Um, so I want 0 to 59. I'm also going to give this a name. So this will be walk simple just in case we add one which has got more complicated animation later on or might have like a jump or a fall or something like that or a dance whatever so i've got this just going to check through what i checked before now i can hit ok and it's just thinking and you can see all of our keyframes along there disappeared 
if I bring back the timeline, you'll see that we've automatically flipped over into this different view. And this is the uh, motion view. And what we've got here is the motion clip, which actually, if we go back to view and go to key mode, we do still have all of the keyframes that we had before, but they're now inside this null, which is all the walk simple. And this is all the information that we had previously, um, but it's all encapsulated in this one very, very useful little tool. So you can ignore all the keyframes you set and just work purely with this. Um, and these are the pictures before. So when we looked at in the animation in the add motion clip window, um, it says add pictures. That's what these are. And this is everything that we've recorded. All the keyframes all stuck in here. Um, and we've got it here as walk simple. We can open it up and we can look at our hierarchy, which is inside there. Uh, you don't ever really need to do that. What I'm going to do is right click here and save motion source as. Now, if I go to my desktop and navigate to my making it look great folder, um, I'm going to make a new folder here and let's call this um, motion clips. Like so, and we'll call this walk simple. We'll keep the names the same, just makes sense. Okay, so we've now got this clip which we can, you know, we could take another one of these if we wanted and you can pop them all over the place and you can do all sorts of things. Uh, and this has been added to a new motion layer, um, which is very slightly different again. Um, we will talk about this in a little bit, but for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go make sure I'm at frame zero because that's always the best place to do this stuff. And I'm going to delete that animation. And I'm gonna also delete it from here just for now. I don't need it. I'm also going to delete that layer. I'm just selecting them hitting backspace. And I can go back and view to keyframe mode. And you can see all of the keyframes have gone, which is great. That's fine. We've got no keyframes here whatsoever. And if I play the animation, nothing happens. Now, this is good because it means you can now save your work. So we can save this bot. Um, or you can just reopen the original bot scene. It's completely up to you because this is exactly the same bot as we started with now. Um, and we can move on to the next move, which will start in the next video.